springy dingy, two ringy dingies. Hello, Hello, your influence. You're short of time. Go ahead. You got it. Okay. So El Chip from the jail in Mexico. Along a one mile tunnel. Yeah, with a motorcycle on rails. Yeah, and that's a precise echo of the escape of about 700 Taliban in Afghanistan arranged by Canada. So if we think Canada is an innocuous little spot in the scam with blood, because the I forget the name of the jail, but it was the, the Canadian Christian Services, mainly the French-speaking arm, that had custody of that jail, and they were training the local Afghani guards. And this is a very sophisticated tunnel, and we have a guy who went out there, I think he was Deputy Secretary to the Department of Defense, or Minister for Defense in Canada. His name is Russ Hebert, I know him. He is a uh, federal uh, politician working with the Conservatives, and he got a nice gig flying wheelchairs to injured parties in uh, Afghanistan. That's so very obvious what he did with the wheelchairs. He put them on two rails, not him, of course. They are hands dirty, these people. Uh, but they built a tunnel, exactly the same model, same MO, not very imaginative, as El Chapo's escape from Mexico. So this technique goes back a long way, Phil. Now I discovered that the Chicago Crime Commission considers that El Chapo is public enemy number one. Gee, what are they trying to distract us from? Well, I don't know, because if he is public enemy number one, we have to ask how far back his tentacles go into the Chicago justice system and the kinds of slight to bubble out of the sewer, like a Bambi. So I see you've written a lot, and maybe you want to just pick up on Colonel Sabar, because there's a, a lot there, Phil. I did scan through the ad today, but there's a lot there. Can you summarize what your current position is with this gentleman? Yes, I'm his phantom wingman, and uh, when you target an aircraft in a flight of two or four or 16 or 20, if you take out one of the aircraft, let's, I'll give you the perfect example and I'd like some chat room support. I see Afterburners here, I can count on her. Get ready Afterburner. Uh, I'm checking Jack Max here, get ready Jack Mac. I'm looking for Swamp Rats here. Uh, I got the three I was looking for. Uh, the perfect case of what happens when a flight leader or a wingman gets blown away uh, caused a man named Colonel James, J-A-M-E-S, this is the search term, guys, James Kasler, K-A-S-L-E-R. Uh, when I was a young and impressionable wannabe fighter pilot, my heroes flew Navy and Marine F-8 Crusaders and Air Force F-105s. Those type of drivers, that's what pilots call pilots, they call them drivers. The guys that were the uh, Crusader drivers or the Thud drivers were a breed unto themselves. And they would do a lot of things authorized or necessary to pay back any attack on their leader or their wingman. Would somebody put up a picture of James Kasler? Uh, when that picture goes up, would someone else put up the front cover of a book, Tempered Steel, T-E-M-P-E-R-E-D, second word, S-T-E-E-L. And it just dawned on me, if one of the people that communicate with me frequently will remind me, I'll bring my Marine Corps sword in here uh, Monday. Who knows, I might even come on by myself later this evening with the Marine Corps sword to let these PFers know. And one might say, thank you for the picture, Swamp Rat. 
That guy right there, thank you, Preston, that's uh, James Kasler. What he did, and you guys can all read about it by searching, uh, sometime in 1966, I believe, he was on his third war. He is B-29 tail gunner, uh, flew eight missions in World War II. He was a fighter ace flying F-86s, just like Joe McConnell. Joe McConnell. Joe McConnell. Some guys don't pick it up very quickly. An ace in Korea. Then instead of flying air defense, uh, air superiority type fighters in, uh, in the Vietnam War, he was assigned to fly the F-105 um, Thunder. I almost slipped. Thunder, Thunder, Thunder. Thunder why I had a hard time remembering Thunder Chief. Uh, because everyone that's anybody that understands, and that sounds like egotistical, but anybody who has a um, aircraft knows those airplanes are not referred to by flying people or informed people as Thunder Chiefs. They're referred to as THUDs, T-H-U-D. Uh, they were the fastest airplane that I'm aware of in Vietnam at treetop level. Uh, some people would say, what about the F-101? What about the F-4? And I'd say, well, I can't frankly address that. But I think because the wing loading on the 105, it could take a lot more punishment down low. So let me tell you what Kasler did. Uh, there's a great biography of him right there, uh, starting with James Helms. Isn't that funny? It's not funny at all. See, these guys are not fooling anybody. Jade Helm, James Helm. How about Spade at the helm? I'm offended at what we do to our heroes. And what's a hero of mine? First and foremost, a mother or a stepmother, somebody who is a caregiver to a human. Where does that come from? We'll take a look at Matthew 18.5 for openers. Uh, but anyway, or how about Matthew 20? Oh, I'm going to embarrass myself now. It's either 25 or 28.40. And I... I'll, uh, at the risk of embarrassing myself, I say it's Matthew 25, uh, but that's a significant enough point where I'm going to find it out right now, and I'm not going to leave it to someone else, because uh, I, I think newcomers might think that I pass out too many assignments, but they don't understand that I'm just trying to protect bandwidth. Uh, what was I talking about? 2540. David, hang in there. I know you're short of time, and believe me, I am too. Uh, 2540. Uh, do 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 um, yes, I'm right. The king will reply, I tell you the truth, whatever you did for one of these, least of these brothers of mine, you did for me. And whatever they did to 66th, they did to him. So he took his fuel-starved F-105 to the nearest tanker, and it's easily done. All you have to do is come up on 311.0 and something up. Oh, how about 36 stud? Skybird, this is stud 36. I need a tanker. My position is these coordinates, and I'm heading south, climbing to 240. Then to, uh, th whoever's handling the sack desk for tankers would say, uh, stud 36, uh, climb to 220. We've got, uh, I'm going to come up with a real t tanker name that I plugged. We've got Turbo 5-1. On your nose, 70, he's uh, descending from 310 to 240, stop climb at 220, and let me know when you have him on the radar. Nose, 68. And stud 36 would say, 36, uh, Judy. Judy's a code word for I'll handle it from here. In which case, Skybird would say, contact Boomer, 318.1. So yeah, Turbo, whoever he was, 51, I made that up. But there is a turbo. They're from Forbes Field, Kansas. What are they going to do about this? What can they do about this? Nothing. They have to sit there and take it. Okay, so anyway, uh, Stud 36 would say uh, uh, visual nose 20, uh, start turn, and the turn might be 30 degrees to the left or right just to accelerate things so that the guy short of gas doesn't have to do too much flaunt. Skip that. You've heard it several times, how to do airy fueling. As soon as the boom operator, excuse me, not the boom operator, the co-pilot, 
would say stud 36, no flow. And then stud 36 would say disconnect, disconnect now. And then the co-pilot would say stud 36, contact Huntress on 323.0. Not two snakes. I'm not sure if the MFA 323 was the rattlesnakes. 314 was the Black Knights. 531 were somebody. Yeah, I think they were the rattlesnakes. Watch how quickly somebody does VMFA, uh, Victor, Mike, Fox, Alpha, 323, uh, and see if their nickname was the Rattlesnakes when I was out there at El Toro with Colonel James Sabow in 1974. So James Kasler got gas because he still had ordnance, and he went back to where his wingman had been taken down, and at treetop level, probably fire in the thud, uh, he was down there snorting around looking for his buddy and calling in fax for air controllers to provide suppressive fire and also calling in an angel helo well anyway unfortunately james kasler got shot down uh and during that mission he earned the second of his three air force crosses and he is the only man in the history of the united states of america to get air force crosses three of them and if you want to know the significance of an Air Force Cross, it's one step below a Medal of Honor. Um, he, he really probably deserved the Medal of Honor. Swamp Rat, you're amazing. Blah, blah, death rattlers. Ah, well, I'll tell you what. Does the Bush family want to engage this in a court? Uh, I didn't think so. Uh, maybe the cross-eyed guy would, but nobody that's a clear thinker with a strong vertebrae. None of those guys want to have any part of this, I don't think. Uh, so, David, you ask why I'm... Focusing on SABO, uh, tactical considerations. There's a huge lawsuit being argued starting the 8th of September, which is Tuesday in the week that involves the 11th of September, uh, which is the 14th anniversary of the false flag, uh, which some people attribute to Muslims, and I attribute it to the Bushes, the Clintons, Marcy, uh, Thomas J. Smolich, people like McCain, I mean, he wasn't one of the planners because he doesn't have much to plan with. Uh, but Hillary and my sister took some intellectual property of mine, and I won't waste time on what it was because most people know. And if anybody wants to know, tell me in the chat room, uh, and I'll repeat it for the umpteenth time. My sister and Hillary stole some intellectual property of mine, and, and which is fine because the truth is the truth. Uh, the truth will set us free, and it will set them uh, in a wheelchair, in a hospital, or in the back of a very nice hearse. I've offered my hearse to three individuals, and those three individuals know who they are, statesmen, that I don't expect to see them with a pulse after the 25th of September. Does that sound like a threat? I hope not, although I am a troubled guy, and I've got a long history to prove I'm a troubled guy. Because Alpha and Boeing both said I was a troubled guy when I suggested that there was a Boeing uninterruptible autopilot. Well, troubled guy. Well, it runs in the family, doesn't it? Look at this. 1944, troublemaker. Ah, 2015, troublemaker. Uh, and there's a quote that Swamp Rat might get. It's in this world. You will have trouble. But be of good cheer. He has overcome the world. David, uh, on the 22nd of January of 1991, uh, Colonel James Sabaugh died, and they intended to kill his wife, too. But they, they knew the schedule of both parties, and they knew that his wife would be going to church, I believe Catholic Mass, and they decided to time the killing of both of them and make it look like a murder-suicide. Well, the only problem with that is Mrs. Sabau went shopping. So then they had to go out suicide, and David, the reason why I'm engaging, when I'm engaging, and as profusely as I'm engaging, is I want to overwhelm them with withering and accurate fire from all quadrants Let's think of it as flanking, grazing, interlocking, fusillade, fields, <clears throat> fields, 
of Fire. And now there is a book, Field of Fire, or Fields of Fire, by James Webb, who's going to run for president. But let's not go there now. Somebody might want to put up the cover of Fields of Fire by James Webb. But when he wrote the book about Vietnam infantry, he was talking about fuselage, flanking, interlocking, and grazing fields of fire. And uh, I've got one more field of fire I'm going to sling at the bushes. At General Alwyn, and he's as queer as a $3 bill. And in 1991, that was not authorized. But those people have always been good at doing naughty things. That's why Kay Griggs husband, uh, who drank a little bit too much. I wonder if I wonder if uh, Kay Griggs husband remembers me sitting at a table next to him in the uh, officers club uh, at the Marine establishment in Washington DC. I bet he doesn't remember that. Sometimes when you get really shit faced, you can't remember stuff, which is a good reason to occasionally put clear water in with your olives so people think that you're having your customary uh, Captain Sherlock Martini, CSM, with two stuffed queens, and you can sit there and drink 16 ounces of water and remember everything. Remember everything. Remember everything. I'll remember you. Who sang that? Frank, here it comes. I field. David, over to you. I'm going to have their ass. James Sabau should be alive. And the other three should be dead for treason and murder. Over to you. Yeah, thanks, Phil. I interested the way you talked about scheduling the hit so that they would get them both in what looked like a murder suicide. That sounds like they were very sensitive to the idea of timing. Timing is everything in these contract hits. And um, how far back does that go? Well, as guess as soon as clocks were invented. But it's interesting that that technique, uh, certainly, if I, if I remember correctly, your sister doing 1988 to ask about the elimination of a threat of mutiny of uh, plane carrying passengers, uh, prisoners, is that correct? Not mutiny so much as hijacking, but we, uh, let's, let's just go ahead and agree, because we are in agreement, and it was December of 1988, my sister called me and said she had a problem, and back then I used to enjoy an occasional bottle or two of Jack Daniels, and I'm sure I was knee deep in one of them. I said, why are you, cause, why are you calling me? You've got a hellaciously big budget. Why don't you get one of your high priced bellhops to handle your question? She said, well, I thought you might be able to help me. And if I'd known then that she was a treasonous lesbo, which reminds me, has anybody answered the question, what does Operation Liquor, L-I-C-K-E-R stand for? Um, I'm going to shave before the wedding if any of you sensitive people are concerned about that. Uh, and I'm looking forward to the wedding, too. It's going to be a real shot in the arm, something positive. But having said that, my sister called and said they needed to get federal prisoners from Hawaii to the mainland. And I said, you don't know what you're talking about. You do it all the time. I've hauled them. And she said, yeah, but we have to assign two marshals, and the airlines will no longer allow us to shackle them you know, because of evacuation. First of all, if these people have done something where they need to be in a federal prison and shackled, who gives a rat's ass if they get out of the airplane? Which yet reminds me, yes, once in Milwaukee, I uh, had a very, very, very small woman. Uh, I don't think she was 36 inches tall. There's a name for that, and it's not dwarfism, and it's not you know, being a midget or a little person. Um, but I saw how little she was, and because I was the captain of the airplane, uh, I wanted her to know that I was aware of her challenge. And so I went, and with, in a voice so quiet, no one but she could hear me, I said, if we have to abort a landing, or if we have, if we have to abort a takeoff or have a problem on landing, I said, you just stay in your seat with your seatbelt on, and I'll be back to carry you off. And, and she took it the right way, and I didn't mean to draw attention to myself. Otherwise, I would have spoken in a louder voice. Because the people that ride on airplanes called air marshals, their plan of action is sudden, loud, and violent. Loud, sudden, loud, and violent. Well, two can play that game. Uh, take a look at the barrage that we've been dishing out on the bushes 
uh, regarding James Sabow, and notice that add to add, they get more uh, powerful. So David, yes, my sister uh, in 1988 asked me how to drone an airplane. I told her. She and Hillary started kicking that around between uh, somewhere between 88 and 93, I'm guessing. Uh, of course, 93 would be January 20th, 93, when Peyronie's breath and the flat, flat chested, fat assed pantsuit uh, prisoner, they sat there licking their chops because they're Georgetown Jesuit products, which means they're for sale and they're queer. And they thought, well, why don't we just take over this nation? Because our nation has always been defended by men with big balls. Check six, Chris. David, did I answer your question? Yeah, that's right. When you said that she had a pile of money, of course, we now know that she'd been gathering that pile in the Department of Justice Asset Forfeiture Fund that was created in 1984. And she and Eric Holder were the bag men and bag women that control what was done with that um, with that fund. And of course, uh, what has been done with that fund is nearly overthrow the government of the United States. So we should always follow the money. So paragraph one of today's post: Barack Obama's cabinet allegedly used BA. That's the small bit. Business Administration, which your sister ran in uh, on 911, used the SBA 8A Guaranteed Loan Program, developed in 2001 by Field McDonald's sister, Christy Marcy, to fund the great escape of the boss of the Sinaloa drug cartel, Joaquin El Chapo Gutzman, who drove along a mile-long tunnel, dug just for him on a specially modified motorcycle on two steel rails out of the Altiplano prison, 55 miles, that's about 90 miles, west of Mexico City. Now, this man had a major rat line, if that's the right term, into Chicago, as soon as he got to be of any significance in that Sinaloa uh, drug cartel. And of course, this was the period where and Little Barry was building his legend. And when did he start building his legend in Chicago? Well, as soon as he fetched up out of the Harvard Law Review, he shows up in the Sidley Austin office, gets hooked up with the Big Michelle, and starts developing the Chicago legend. And we have to assume that Chicago drug trade, the down low club, which is where these cross dresses mix and make, they must have been in deep uh, sync with each other. Now in um, 1993, Hillary ordered the firing of everyone in the travel in the White House. And she replaced them, this was known as the Travelgate scandal, with the people who were chartered to fly around her husband's campaign backers and funders, which had to be the Sinaloa drug cartel. So just imagine, you've got a bunch of people, I assume, were uh, loyal in principle to the United States of America, who had been dealing with the transportation of presidents and, and the immediate White House staff. Now, obviously, that goes through multiple generations, but it back to the founding of that travel office to Andrew Jackson, 1812. Now, think how powerful one might become if you could blackmail and trap and extort the people responsible for the President of the United States and his associates through various hotels around the world. And, of course, one way of interest Trapping, said presidents, would be you take building a marked proclivity. I think I taught you what proclivity was, didn't I, Phil? Yes, we were discussing that on the 7th of August of 2008 when we were talking about British Invisibles, uh, the Boston Investment, Mantle Pants Romney, who had a boyfriend named Pardo, and uh, Barry Swatero, some people think he's Obama, uh, who had a boyfriend named Turdy. And so the adventures of Turdy and uh, Pardo resulted in the propensity to bend over and grab your ankles. David, over to you. 
Don't make me sing Frank Ifield's song, David. You either speak or I'm singing. Turn your mic on if you elect. Oh, okay, yeah, I better, yeah, better speak. Okay, so your sister had another asset besides the dollars in the Department of Justice Asset Forfeiture Fund to help bribe or entrap wayward presidents or perverted presidents. And the other asset was a database on so-called the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. So you could either bribe the man or the woman or set him up in a luxury hotel with a child used and get a film. Either way you ended up opening the president. But the murders that spewed out of the travel gate office after the seven regular people had been fired and said the, the White House staff reporting to Hillary Clinton there was 20 women and one man and the man was Vince Foster until he died. Then her staff were just women, because she likes women. She likes women very much. She has an absolute contempt for men. It doesn't have to be white men or black men or yellow men or brown men. She has a contempt for men, full stop. She had a contempt for her husband. The guy is really way down in the sewer in terms of his personal ethics, but that's by the by. They then got much more sophisticated with the advance of technology. And they set up what I'm calling the Travelgate assassination betting pools. So the people, no longer public servants, these were outsourced uh, operated from the so drug trade. They started booking people from the White House into different uh, parts of the world. And of course, uh, they would be checked into hotels and checked out of hotels. They would drive perhaps with guarded limos to airports and then it would be flown from one spot to another. But every leg of that journey, checked in or, that or out of the hotel or getting on a plane, offers the potential for what is known as assassination betting, where the parties that believe they would like a particular target to be deaded or whacked. Let's take Ron Brown. Um, they put their money all. They put non Ron Brown's name by, and they predict the time that Ron Brown will die. Now, the people best qualified to make sure that Ron Brown dies at a, at a particular time that results in a healthy profit to the better on the inside course, is the Travelgate staff. Now, why was Ron Brown whacked? Well, in his office, Department of Commerce, he had all of the security for systems such as the Defence Red Switch Network and the Onion Router. So after he was died, your sister sent in a man by the name of Ira Sukovitz to his office. Hey, David, you know why we're doing this? Why? Because somebody in the chat room says, Hey, Field, I accidentally dialed your phone a week ago. Did you block my number? And I said, No, I didn't block your number. I don't do that. And I said, Just to prove to the chat room that I haven't blocked your number, call me and I will not answer. So pardon the interruption, but that's about credibility and accountability. And you were talking about some other ability. Over to you. Yeah. Uh, uh, I'm talking about uh, the ability to track a target on a particular leg of a journey around the world that might be involved. One leg is a limo, as in JFK. Another leg is inside the hotel. Another leg is out to the airport, perhaps with a helicopter. Another leg is uh, in the airport or get it onto the plane and then the various waypoints that take you to your destination. Every time you leave at a specific time to enter the leg and get out of the leg at the other end, there might be another waypoint, <clears throat> there's no mind for a travel gate assassination betting pool. So the high value target and how much money they would have put on JFK or Colonel Sabau, or uh, a 
um, let's say, Chick Birmingham for Captain Gerald de Conte. It's irrelevant as long as there is someone with the capability of delivering the second at which that individual is killed such that the prediction closest to that second scoops the pot. And that's how the money is actually hitting. So all that it requires is excellent communication between the people who wittingly or unwittingly are carrying the target, whether it's in a limo such as JFK or in a plane or in a hotel. <coughs> and um, the ability for the hit team to deliver on that second. So the maximum amount of profit goes through to the individual close to the bet and they get the funding for the hit. So in 2001, January of 2001, your sister makes an announcement. She's then the chief operating officer of the Small Business Administration. And she says that she has accelerated the loan guarantee program to bring the time elapsed between the small business and the application and the time the guarantee is approved to under 60 minutes. That's pretty remarkable, particularly when you look at these 8 a companies and realize that in principle there's nothing wrong with the idea, but what interest do companies, 8 a companies owned by Chinese or Vietnamese or Mexicans have in achieving or acquiring that loan and then turning it into a hit using the travel gate assassination betting. So I don't, I can't prove that Colonel Sebao was killed in one of these arrangements, but it does look very suspicious for you. And of course, the great thing or the challenge for people who are trying to track the killers is they're using technologies that render them anonymous. So what you're betting on is you're betting on the time of death. It's very hard to prove that you intended the individual to die. You're now in the dark web. Actually, this is where I think able danger sits. No one quite knows where we are, Phil. You want to know where I am? Yes, yeah. <laughs> go ahead. Well, right now, my derriere is sitting at 401 Main Street, and the fact that I can sit here with my back to the window three days a week and fear no evil is because a lot of the insiders know who we are, what we do, and what team we're on, and they don't want to they don't want to continue to do the evil that is offered to them by their U.S. senior executive service bosses, but they don't want to walk away from those cush jobs with the good retirements, and they don't want to have their wife and kids uh, evicted from their home, because that's what they do to little people. I'm trying to remember Tom Crawford's name. It'll probably come to me if somebody named Afterburner or Denise C. or Liberish Peasant reminds me of Tom Crawford's name. Every time I say Tom Crawford, your dog is going to bark. Tom Crawford. Woo! See, I told you he would. But anyway, um, I've been evicted from homes twice. Uh, Tom Crawford's been evicted from homes twice. But I, I don't want to sound like we're having a public disagreement, but do you know, uh, it's very unlikely that Sabau's hit was one that generated a scooping the pot because Sabau's hit was only uh, ordered, I believe, about 12 hours before it happened. And here's why I believe that. And I will defer to Dr. Sabau, who is David Sabau, his younger brother, age 74, Rapid City, South Dakota, if anybody is within driving distance of uh, Canton, South Dakota, I say again, Canton, South Dakota, Canton, Georgia, Canton, Texas, Canton, Ohio, uh, football field, Canton, Ohio, Canton, South Dakota, Canton, Georgia, Canton, Texas. If anybody wants to have fun, and nobody has to do that, but it might be fun to get your picture taken with uh, David Sabau and myself and the Sabau 3 hearse, uh, and it's perfectly legal to have fake plates on a car when it's not uh, driving down a highway. So the car will have the commemorative Sabal 3 plates on the car when it is photographed by anybody who wants a photograph. 
Faded photographs covered now with lines and creases. Tickets torn in half, memories in bits and pieces. Traces of love. That's uh, Denny Yost, who died about two to three years ago. And his group was, uh, hmm, who were they? Uh, and it'll come to me, David. Traces, traces. Spooky. Uh, classics for I told you it would come to me just like Tom Crawford probably will come to me if somebody will print it. So, David, did I answer your question or didn't you ask me one? Sure you did, Phil. So, um, we've got Euro Soccer Pidging, the, the safe of, of the late Ron Brown, former Secretary of Commerce, as ordered by Christine Marcy, who was then the senior counsel for the detention and deportation program of the Immigration and Naturalization Service, with a pile of money in her forfeiture fund. She sends in Ira Sokovic into the office of Ron Brown, the, the top secret encryption files that, that would allow people to get into the Onion Router network that was under development by the US Navy's research labs and conduct clandestine assassination rings. The security guards are then transferred to the Office of the Small Business Administration. And the administrator of the Small Business Administration, I think by the name of Ada Alvarez, is frightened out of the position after the swearing in of uh, George Bush. And the Small Business Administration is taken over by your sister, who now has exactly 10 or 15 billion dollars in the asset forfeiture fund. She has a matrix of 8A companies owned by women, blacks, lesbians, gays, bisexual, transgender, Chinese, Vietnamese, anything but Caucasian. She has access to the Indian router network, which was developed by the United States Navy. And a patent application was made in 1998 that was granted in July of 2001, which allowed her, that is Christine Marcy, to equip her small business administration 8A companies with the Onion Router Network to prepare for the attempt to overthrow the government of the United States on 911, specifically by whacking certain key targets. Those key targets, I have to assume, included George Bush and Dick Cheney. And the then uh, chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Henry Shelton, who we all remember launched that Able Danger counterintelligence program to try and find out who had burrowed into the United States military and National Command Authority. That was shut down, of course, in the year before by the Clintons. And the only logical way to flip from an exercise, such as the one we witnessed at Amalgam Virgo and Global Guardian, Amalgam Virgo being 1st and 2nd of June 2001, Global Guardian being 10th to 12th of September 2001, in any convincing way, is to take the principles in the National Command Authority, which would have been George Bush and General Henry, Henry Shelton, move them out of position and then plug in over the Onion Router their two predecessors. In the case of George Bush, that was Bill Clinton. In the case of General Henry Shelton, it was John Shalikashvili. And the reason for doing that switch to those particular individuals is they would have heard of continuity of exercises ad nauseum during the period when they were actually in office. So it would be a seamless transfer, provided they had the keys to the AT companies. Did you say seamless transfer or semen transfer? Seamless. Okay, great. Seamless. Thank you. Okay.
So in order for Bill Clinton to step into the attempt of the United States on 911, the network that he should have had access to to make that successful had to be significantly more um, coordinated and synchronized and pervasive than the network that George Bush had. So they put George Bush in an elementary school. And he had his aid coming through and whistling like ear, the second plane, etc., etc. And probably George Bush would not have realized that the attacks in New York were to take care of the financial center of the United States of America, that the attacks after New York were going to take care of the military and the legislative centers of the United States in the form of the Pentagon and the Capitol building. <coughs> and using the travel gate assassination betting paradigm, what the conspirators wanted to do was to try and hit the, the same time as the Capitol building without warning at a very specific place, well, particularly in the case of the Pentagon, because they needed to knock out the Pentagon's U.S. Navy Command Center, which was about to commission the onion router under the upgrade overseen by AMIC, and actually the prime contractor was Martin, the erstwhile employer of John Bennett, and that's why John Bennett Ramsey's daughter John Benet Ramsey was tortured to death in an assassination betting snuff film, i.e., they bet the time she died. They didn't actually cut her head off, they think to the top of the skull that looks like they were trying. But I don't want to go into the sort of detail there. But certainly, her murder is consistent with the uh, Bill Clinton's habit of biting through the lips of his rape victims, an MO that stretches back to his time at Oxford where he was kicked out for drug, drug dealing and rape. And it's pretty you think that you've got a guy called Al Chapo who's escaped from a Mexican prison and head of the biggest and most dangerous drug cartel in the world when the former president of the United States was peddling drugs at Oxford University in 1969. Sure. The French saying, plus ça ne change, plus ça change, plus ça change. The more it changes, the more it's the same thing. And that travel gate betting model, apart from the technology field, I don't think that's changed since Andrew Jackson's 1812 uh, defeat of the British in Washington, well, wherever he defeated them. So back to the sister, your sister. She's got a huge amount of money sitting in the Department of Justice Asset Forfeiture Fund that she can deploy at very short notice. In fact, she can place a bet in the Travelgate assassination betting model against the name of the people she'd like to target. Amazing she didn't target you for because, but I guess she would never have guessed that you'd be coming for her a few years later. Yes, David, but it's not me, is no, it? Quite. Sorry, were you saying so? Yeah, I said it's really not me that's coming for her. It's herself. Uh, you're absolutely right. And so she doesn't know when to look within, which would be pretty foul, or without, which is going to look very dangerous from her point of view. Her silence is very telling. But she would have specified, I believe, being the senior bureaucrat in Washington at the time, and having practiced continuity of government exercises, she would know that George Bush and Dick Cheney had to be killed. She would know General Henry Shelton had to be killed. She needed to set it up so they could actually specify the time he was killed under the betting rules, the assassination betting rules, so that the people who killed these individuals would get the, get the chance to scoop the pot. So Dick Cheney, George and Henry Shelton had to be removed if the overthrow of the United States government had any chance of success. Who would step into the breach? 
Well, Dick Clinton, uh, sorry, Bill Clinton in the Sheraton Hotel in Portland, Queensland, where the Sheraton Hotel hmm, hooked up by Circo into the onion router network of the United States Navy research labs. So he was wired live, if that's the right word, to the conspirators. Where was John Shalakashvili, the father of whom was a major in the Waffen SS, who lied about his past to get into the United States and sent Illinois. And this clown was promoted through the ranks to eventually get to Commander-in-Chief, sorry, uh, Commander of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. <laughs> And he was the guy who in 1997 went to Beijing and gave a talk to the People's Liberation Army in Beijing University there. And he said, before leaving here, I've been instructed by my president to provide you with details of all of the weapons, all of the United States weapons programs. So basically, your counterintelligence system had collapsed in the Clinton era. All money in counterintelligence in the United States is now wasted, but that's by the by. After coming back from, from Beijing, the conspirators, of which I would still argue your sister is the principal, decided they to get John Shalikash for the Innes, where he could move back into his role as chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, were they to succeed with the coup d'etat. So John Shalikashvili was transferred as a director to Boeing. Now whether he physically up and squatted in what I don't know, this would be about the 1997-98 period, I think it's quite likely he goes and hangs his hat in Chicago, where the Sinaloa drug cartel basically controls all of the keys in the city administration and the state administration, including State Senator Little Barry Swatara. And now it becomes very dangerous because with John Shalikashvili given a position as a director with his background as chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, access to the onion router and the Sinaloa drug cartel, he can start entrapping and extorting Boeing directors and forcing them to move from Washington State to Chicago. And fortunately for the United States of America, that transaction took place. Boeing was the world's largest military and civilian aircraft manufacturer. Rather unwise of that, because when we're talking about the Boeing uninterruptible autopilot, Boeing decided, or I'm sure it was extorted, into outsourcing its command and control communications, computers, and intelligence and reconnaissance developments to SECA. Meaning SECA, at any time through 911, had the motive and the opportunity and weapon to support Travelgate assassination betting and determine the precise second, if not the precise millisecond, when a plane carrying high value targets is generally just one, let's say seven minutes in Chick Berlin. Chicago, sorry, Serco decides that the better that they want to win and uh, with the prediction that uh, Captain Chick Berling in flight A B seventy seven and Captain Gerald Aconto, the duty officer of the U.S. Navy Command Center, they had to die at precisely 9.37.19. And the task of killing them at 9.37.19 was delegated to the 8A companies on the Onion Router, hooked up to the Sheraton chain of hotels around the world. So bang, 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 we have... Captain, sorry, John Shalikash for the, at the Sheraton Hotel in Chicago, watching the screen. We have the 8A hit teams in the Pentagon City Hotel, the Sheraton Hotel 
immediately the overlooking crime scene, with antenna on the roof to impute waypoints, including the last waypoint or terminal waypoint, into flight A77 or the drone behind it. Because Field says, and I have no reason to doubt, Captain Chick Burlingham went over the Arctic in A77, and that was down in the Atlantic zone. And the drone served the pur purpose of creating the illusion for the American public that this Al Qaeda outfit had such incredibly precise technology they could take out the Pentagon's U.S. Navy Command Center at 530 miles an hour in an aircraft allegedly weighing over 100 tons, flying a tight sliceback turn of 270 degrees from 7,000 feet to 15 feet elevation at 530 miles an hour. So there's no human being at the controls. However, one of their biggest mistakes, strategically from an evidentiary point of view, is the observers and the players, the Sheraton Hotel Onion Mountain Network, inadvertently imposed some interesting date stamps and time stamps that indicates the party is that were actually involved in the direction of the attack. So the date stamp is September the 12th, 2001, which was the date of Bill Clinton in the Port Douglas Sheraton Hotel. The time stamp was 17719. David, you're gone. Are you still there? I wonder if we've lost David. Let's see. No, we still got the connection. He's trying to call. But see, I think he needs to let it auto call. It'll call me back. In the meantime, what a great time to sing I'll Remember You by Frank Ifield. Did I post the answer? Well, I think better than sing. Agent 66 uh, just posted a picture of me standing in front of a Boeing 707. David, if you're here, nope, he's not here. He's still trying. Uh, I should sing first, then I'll tell you the story. I'll remember you. Uh, David, are you there? Yes. Oh, okay. Well, let me finish telling the story I started, then you can go. Uh, somebody just put up a picture of me standing in front of uh, a Boeing 707 derivative, which was Air Force One on that morning of whatever date in April uh, of 2009, and I had my co-pilot take that picture. Uh, we had just signed the paperwork and gotten the weather briefing, and we were walking out to our A320 to go to Adderall and continue on to Actau for a 24, 27-hour layover at Actau, uh, and that's on the Caspian Sea, and... Uh, there's lots of pictures on the internet that I've taken at Actel, uh with Russian fighters, of course. Uh, but the deal with that picture, David, if you've forgotten, uh, the president of Iran and Putin were both in Astana, and I sent a message uh, to the president of Iran that if he'd be so kind as to release television journalist Roxana, R-O-X-A-N-A, Saberi, S-A-B-E-R-I, uh, she was being held in prison in Iran because they thought she was a spy. Uh, she doesn't have the gray matter to be a spy. Uh, she's just a little girl that wants to be on TV. And I think she's out in New York now at a bigger market. But uh, prior to going to Iran, she was uh, a newscaster in Fargo. That's how I knew her. So I told the guy, uh, the president of Iran, in a written message, not on the phone or in the bar, uh, although they were in the... Uh, certain hotel. So then I said to the president of Iran, if you let her go, what I'll do for you is I'll allow you to have all the revenue flow from Captain Sherlock solves 9-11. Now I think he probably took a look and found out there is a movie called Captain Sherlock solves 9-11. Uh, and it was uh, pointing out that the Muslims could not have been responsible for 9-11. So he probably thought, yeah, that guy's a pretty good guy for a pilot because most pilots are jerks. Um, but anyway, so he released Roxana Saberi right after I asked him to. You can say that's a coincidence. 
I don't give a rat's ass. If I say the sky is going to fall and then the sky falls, it really scares the shit out of people that don't understand evil danger, who we are, who we work for, how we get our information, and how we're still alive. Tick tock, tick tock. David, over to you. Yeah, that's right, Jim. And JKR says, I said before the show, we can see where ISIS did the beheading videos. I think what I said was, you can see where ISIS got the item, the beheading videos. Because, and it's pretty horrific to look at, if you look at the Sinaloa videos with chainsaws uh, decapitating people and prisoners, you can see that that's one uh, hair breadth away from a mark where you could be, be kind of precise about who get, gets the money shot according to the time they predicted. But I digress. Uh, it's 12.25, and I just want to put up this fascinating image which i think is conclusive evidence that your sister bankrolled the 911 attack so it shows an e4b fit um we put that into one of the books many many times ago on the right there we had netjets middle east was based out of the raf uh, norfolk in the united kingdom and a NetJets aircraft was seen to be chasing United 93 when it crashed into the field outside Shanksville, Pennsylvania. That was an unseen commander that was actually flying the plane through electronic tethering, and while the Travelgate assassination betters predicted the time of death of those on board. The inference being that when the ground, and literally was vaporized, bandana, the people in the NetJets aircraft could actually deliver on a particular and scoop the pot. Then you have Circo with the clock. That's probably the most important icon in the Circo logo <coughs> is that damn clock. And it says February the 23rd, 2013. Gee, we've been working at this a long time, haven't we? Uh, United States link shot all or war by Alexander Haig and the Saudi bin Laden group to an apparent Ketam procurement fraud by his sister Christine Marcy, who first administration inventor installed Circo UK secondary E4 aircraft to disrupt a timely Pentagon response to the bin Laden attacks of 911. Well, we know a lot more than then. That was 2013. We now know so much to disrupt the Pentagon net, like the National Command Authority's Red Switch Network. It was much more about being the desired time for the plan to hit or appear to hit the Pentagon, i.e. at 9.37.17. So you're running, I suggest, Bill, a travel gate assassination betting pool with senior executive service and corrupt insiders of the White House, with or without the knowledge of George Bush. But it is rather relevant, I think, that George Bush wasn't in the White House. He was in an entry school. And General Henry Shelton was not on seat in domestic US. He was on a plane to be knighted. So your sister had presumably conducted the travel gate office left over from the Clinton administration and made sure that the principal obstacles to coup d'etat were out of country where they could be exposed and killed. In country, you have John Shalikash with the in Chicago, and you have Bill Clinton plugged into a very powerful Sheraton network that straddled the globe. And there was just one guy that I believe who would have escaped the carnage in the, the Capitol building, and that's a man by the name of Dennis Hastert, who said, new speaker, I think he's third in line of succession if Bush and uh, Cheney had got whacked. Apparently, though, he wasn't going to hang about in the Capitol building and get whacked himself. He was taken out and he was put on a helicopter, if I understand correctly, in Chicago. That's where the 
coup was based with the Sinola, Sinola Hotel, uh, cartel. Now, I believe, Field, correct me, it's taught on you. Hastert has now been charged by the police with concealing in payments, blackmailer. If I understand correctly, the blackmailer has evidence that Hastert was diddling little boys. So it's the same old, same old, old, old. You get the powerful people compromised with encounters with children, and then they have this being very powerful, very dead, very bright. And of course, if they end up in a prison and they recognize as having done something to a child, uh, the way in which they die could be very painful. 12.30, Phil, and uh, what would you like to do now? Well, I just told the chat room that at the end of the show, I'm going to sing Change of Heart. So uh, if you want to leave, go ahead with a clean conscience. I'm, I'm not going to play Change of Heart because if I do, it'll take up bandwidth. Uh, and I don't want to do that because we've been sort of fortunate that we're getting a lot of these shows put up immediately without interference or without grievous technological problems from me. So if you're ready to hang up, go away. If you want to say something, you know, stay. But otherwise, when you go away, I'm going to sing them a song, and then I'm going to, uh... oh, and by the way, Pat S., you just put up a song. I'll play that when we're off air, and I'd like to talk to you on the phone tonight, uh, or even late this afternoon. Actually, as soon as I'm done with the radio show, if you want to call any time thereafter, I will have listened to that song, because you don't know how good the timing is, because this afternoon or this evening, I have to call a number and leave my voice uh, speaking, and that voice speaking, uh, the recording, is going to be played uh, just prior to the song, I Care, by Tom T. Hall. Uh, and uh, what happens at a lot of weddings, I guess, is the bride, that's uh, tough to talk about. The bride, oh, never mind, I can't do it, but uh, you guys know where I'm going. So, David, uh, you have anything you want to add before you say goodbye? Uh, uh, yes, I'll put in the last paragraph. I'll quickly read that. Phil McConnell is standing by to brief General Joseph F. Dunford, Jr., USMC, Commandant of the Marine Corps, before requesting from Congress the authority he needs by way of letters of mark and reprisal to confiscate the onion router assets used in circos and its bankers' ongoing services to core training, Armour's 8A cabinet, and the Sinaloa drug cartel. Over and out, Phil. Thanks. Yeah, and if you go back later and read today's radio show ad, you'll see that I redacted something, and I said it's because uh, I'm not going to answer the question until after I have electronic proof that uh, Commandant of the Marine Corps, Joseph Dunford, has uh, received the information I'm going to send him about treasons multiple, and if he doesn't do anything, then he's letting the world know that he's on their team, and if he's on their team, he's not on my team, and uh, he's got a tough choice to make here, because uh, the times, they're changing. So I'm going to sing a song, and are you going to disconnect now, David? Yeah, I'll listen to a bit of the song, and uh, I, uh, I support, best wishes to your daughter and everything, and the marriage celebration, I hope everything goes well. Oh, I'm sure it will. Hang on, i got to get the lyrics, because I don't know them. It's Change of Heart by um, Classics 4. It was not a big hit. Uh, change of Heart. Uh, better put Classics 4. Anyway, while I'm searching for these lyrics, uh, Pat Schreifels in Coon Rapids, Minnesota, just sent me a song, and she wanted me to listen to it in reference to my daughter's wedding. And what she didn't know... Uh, when she sent me that very nice song that I haven't listened to yet, was, um, I can't do things, oh, rats. I can't do two things at once, so bear with me. Ah, garbage. Okay, uh, I'm not going to sing the song because I don't have the lyrics and I'm not going to waste everybody's time. But uh, Pat Schreifels uh, sent me a song. And uh, I'm going to listen to the song, and then Pat and I are going to talk because I have to call a number that's a deadline that will go right to a recording, and I have to record a message for my daughter, uh, and that will be played 
my voice with my message will be played. Apparently, as she and I are walking out to the center of the dance floor to dance to the song I Care by uh, Tom T. Hall. Mm -hmm. I care, I do, there's no one like you. And sometimes I get grouchy like an angry old bear. I want you to know I care. I love you too much. That's how the song ends. David, there's the big red button, so I'm getting my finger on the trigger, and I'll do something. I'll put that song in the chat room uh, after we hang up. So whoever's got the... Uh, Whoever's got the hammer, which is Swamp, she gave me the big red button. There's another button from Taco. But when I get to 321, uh, then I'll put this on the uh, archive and go on with the wedding plans. Already, no 321. You notice I'm not going to hit disconnect if I don't get the proper protocol because uh, that would be something ill-disciplined. <laughs> 